began as an idea for a visually appealing and inventive roller coaster spiraled into something that would change the landscape of coasters forever. Quickly spurring interest by hordes of enthusiasts, the Raptor Coaster has become one of the most desired budget coasters after it defied the odds and blurred the lines of cost versus quality of coasters. But how does an RMC Raptor work? Materializing in mid to late 2015 by infamous coaster inventor Alan Shoki, a Raptor coaster is a concept by famed coaster manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction. Research began for the firm by creating a large I beam single rail prototype, now referred to as T Rex track, to prove its feasibility. From there, an alternative, minimized version of the T Rex was born the Raptor track. This version was created out of necessity for size and cost, as the T-Rex concept has since proven not financially viable. After this, a small ride world prototype, as well as trains, was made as a proof of concept and to allow potential clients to write a demo of the ride before purchasing. The demo shows part of the layout from Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, the first Raptor purchased. While the Raptor Coaster concept is revolutionary, it's actually not the first coaster to take its shot at this concept. Back in the 1960s, famous coaster manufacturer Mock Rides sold a similar single rail concept to showmen and parks looking for a small, kid or family oriented coaster. As shown, the coaster by Mock, comprised of a rectangular track and straddle single file seating, has a mechanic similar to that of a side friction coaster, but instead of side plates steering the train, wheels on the train assembly steer the train. This version also did not have any upstops, wheels to prevent a vertical derailment, which is why the coaster was very mild in elements. Being only 15.5 inches across, a fraction of the T-Rex track size, the Raptor track allows riders to have a lower heart line or center which allows the coaster to perform maneuvers that are tighter and more compact than any other coaster on the market. Unlike the MAC concept, Raptor trains have upstops alongside road and side wheels that ride on a very small ledge on either side of the rail. These ledges, in a way, are like rails, which makes the idea less of a single rail coaster, but more of a normal coaster with a very slender track. The ride's footprint of 50 feet by 400 feet allows for the ride to fit into the location it was originally intended. Large family entertainment centers, places such as boomers, moderately sized family owned parks, or even zoos. The Raptor Coaster is designed to be easy and quick to build for parks through its minimalistic and compact design. All coasters from RMZ have prefabricated track that is rigid and ready to install when it arrives. The coaster's supports are often centralized on one location, minimizing the number of footers a park needs to pour. Each support connection is made to allow for a large amount of alignment discrepancies while not jeopardizing safety, meaning that they can be adjusted during the build process. Each section of track is branded with a code for a build by numbers concept. The code comprises of the park's basic initials, then a number corresponding to the location in the course. Connecting each track segment is a flat, bent piece of steel on the bottom and a slightly smaller one on top. This similarity on each side gives the ride its appealing aesthetic because it makes it hard to tell which way is up. 
The mechanics of the ride are designed to cut corners for costs, but only where it's safe. Each car of the eight passenger train is made up of the spine with a double sided ball joint with wheel bogies, while the seat is made from only a few pieces of folded steel and simple foam polymer for the seat back. Each restraint is a combo lap bar and seat belt over the shoulder restraint. On the side of the restraint is a unique ratcheting system that uses multiple poles and slots to allow for a wide range of riders. Unlike traditional coasters, there is no onboard tank to actuate or hold the restraints closed. That is left to the ratcheting mechanism. Instead, as a train rolls into the station, a pneumatic ramp pushes itself into the back of the train to pressurize the system and then activate the actuators to unlock or unlock the restraints. As for the brakes and drive tires, this is where RMC decided to simplify the mechanics. For brakes, Raptors have two options, friction and or magnetic. For friction brakes, RMC repurposed air suspension bags to have single brake slabs push upward on the bottom of the train to bring it to a stop. Similarly, magnetic brakes use their presence to affect the movement of the train. To stop the train, the magnetic slabs are pushed closer to the train, causing the intended interference. Once the train is halted, the magnets are lowered, allowing their force to be easily overcome by gravity, and the train begins to move again. Finally, the drive tires are chained together in groups of three or fewer to run only off of a single motor. Since each train is more long than wide, this is not an issue. Everything in this ride was designed with ease of use, maintenance, and cost effectiveness in mind, which frees up capital for other things such as theming. Like all coasters, the Raptor Coaster has a plethora of proximity sensors to monitor the progress of a cycle and track where each train is at all times. Each section of the course, called block sections, is monitored by two sensors for each position for redundancy. All the sensors and mechanical features, such as lift fault sensors and drive tires, are wired into the main ride computer, located in the backstage areas, and are operated by the main ops panel. At California's Great America, Royal Blazer's ride computer was programmed by Irvine Andre Engineering, with engineering furnishings by Red Viking. There are no continuously active onboard electronics, and each restraint will never open unless power is provided and the bus bar is located on the back, which swing out and in when docked in the station. There are five channels, ground and one for each two rows, which, after they come online, the restraints are operable. Depending on the client's intended setup for operations, there are two current options. Roadblazer at California's Great America uses micro blocks to allow the ride to have 11 block breaks so that when one train is leaving the station, when it's about halfway out, the next train can start pulling in already. For Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, their system employs a slightly longer continuous loading system where the train does not stop in the station but rolls through slowly, allowing riders to board one by one and once the train reaches the lift, it's locked, checked, and ready to go. The debate is still out at which is faster, but it all depends on informing the riders of operation strategy prior to boarding. On the current version of RMC Raptors, the ride begins with a 105 plus foot, 45 degrees steep ascent, steeper than the average 30 degrees amongst other coasters. After which you are led into a sharp banked U-turn and hill that will provide back row riders with maximum airtime, that butterflies feeling. This slows the train considerably, allowing you to enjoy the view for like a second before you are thrust into a 90 degree drop and reaching your max speed at 52 miles per hour. After which you pull into a late turn down Raven inversion. After this, you soar into the off axis airtime hill, conveniently designed to make the proper clearances of the lift. You are then led into the upward helix, an S curve, and then into a small incline that provides a quick and forceful pop of airtime. After, you enter into a cutback inversion over the station, a zero-g roll, an overbanked U-turn, and then into an ejector airtime hill that proceeds into downward decline brakes. The whole ride lasts just over a minute to maximize operations given the train's capacity. Overall, the RMC Raptor has proven that thrilling rides don't always have to cost an exorbitant amount of money, and that the future is bright for small and large parks alike. I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of RMC Raptor coasters. I make these videos to showcase the truly awe-inspired engineering that goes into rides we get our heads off on daily. If you did enjoy this, definitely let me know so that I can make more by like, commenting, but first subscribing down below. Make sure to roll through our backlog of other great How Does This Ride Work videos, some of which you might like. There's a lot of them. We cover Six Flags, Cedar Fair, and everything in between. We also make ride model projects, and our social media is linked below. 
Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Welcome to Hoster Labs, and I'll see you at the parks.